When the trolls aren't questioning my sex life or my parentage, uh, they all like to say the same thing. Colin, you're stupid. Well, I don't know why they would say that because I never really claim to be smart. I just say I kind of keep my eyes open and tell you guys what I see. Uh, you know, there's a lot of smart people out there talking about race. and But the only problem I have with all these smart people is... Well, sometimes they don't answer the questions that I really want them to answer. So when I think of smart people, I'm thinking of people like uh, Tina Fey. I mean, she's supposed to be a genius. She's on TV this week saying white woman, white women who voted for Trump are a bunch of idiots and basically should just go home and keep baking cookies because they do not share her Manhattan eye view of the planet. Then on BBC, our everybody's favorite African novelist, Adiche. We've actually talked about her a lot on this channel. And uh, Adiche, she's reminding Emmett Terrell, the prominent American journalist, reporter, magazine, entrepreneur, that uh, you know only she is entitled to, 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 to describe what is racist and what is not. Trump has been racist in his language. You don't. That's not true. He hasn't been racist. Textbook I mean, racism let, is the let phrase me he tell used. you, because of the, you're going to say this is because of the... If you're a white the, man, you don't get to define what racism is. Then what about Australia? I mean, they've got some genius people down there. I mean, this Australian woman wanted to take her kid to a playground. She gets there and she's told that, no, this playground is not only for people who do not speak English at home. This playground is not for you. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna have a, like, an, like a segment on the BBC, or you're gonna have a playground set up only for non-white people, that's just not one person decide waking up one morning and deciding that would be a good idea. There's a lot of people involved in that decision who have to sign off of it. A lot of smart people, just like Tina Fey, just like that woman at that playground in Australia, who's they keep white kids off the playground. But when you talk about smart kids and smart people i mean who is smarter than this guy who got into stanford recently by writing on his college application black lives matter 100 times this was in response to a question like what do you think is important or what do you value and he wrote a black lives matter 100 times and uh well you know that kid's a genius I would love to ask him this question. We're gonna, I'm gonna ask in a minute. I hope I get an answer someday. He's a, he's a student, by the way. That guy's a student at Princeton. I think it's called Princeton Day School, one of these hyper upper class, hyper exclusive schools. Most probably mostly for children of faculty and business leaders in and around Princeton. And uh, up in Westport, Connecticut. You ever been to Westport? When the person who sent me this story from Westport, when he sent it to me, he reminded me that's where all the rich people live. That's where all the hedge fund managers, that's where Paul Newman used to live. Lots and lots of money in in, um, in Westport. and But apparently there's also lots and lots of, of white racism directed at this, this black person who lives in Westport and it goes to high school there. They even had a contest about white privilege in Westport. He wrote the winning essay saying he didn't like white people because they're always messing with him in Westport all because of their all because of their uh, white privilege. So maybe we can get him to answer a couple questions. And uh, I mean, I basically want to know the same thing from them that a lot of people want to know from me. People are always coming on my YouTube channel and on my on my Twitter account like this guy did. What did he say? He said, uh, my only issue with Colin Flaherty is that he doesn't identify his end goal. How can these issues be fixed? He often avoids the issue. Well, I've, I tell people a hundred times. Well, two things. One, I don't do causes because that's a deflection. I don't do solutions because they're pretty obvious. I mean, I, I ask people like this guy. I said, if someone were punching you in the face over and over and over, how long would it take for you to figure out how to fix that issue? Um, you know, under 10 seconds, probably. But uh, so when people say I don't identify uh, solutions, no, when I give a solution, they don't like it. I say behave. But apparently that's not it's not a good enough solution. I'm not smart enough to figure out a real solution. 
So maybe we can get some of these brainiacs we just met at the BBC and in Westport and in Princeton and, and down in Australia and all over the dang place. Maybe we can get some of them to help help us out. I mean, there's so much going on. Can somebody just tell me, I mean, what's up with all this black criminality? I mean, in the Bronx, what's up with these guys? Why are so many, why do we have so many videos of black people in hoodies with guns robbing Asian business owners all over the country? That's a black thing. Could you help me? Could you help me out with that? That kid in, in, in Princeton, the guy who wrote Black Lives Matter a hundred times, he's, a, he's of Asian descent. I think he might be Pakistani since he's also Muslim. Lots of Pakistani people in this country working at these stores. Lots of, um, lo lots of people from India working in these stores. They are constant victims of relentless black hostility and violence. We see it here all the time. We document it here all the time. Here's another story. Uh, a bunch of black people and a b bunch of black people hijack uh, hijack a guy's van. They rob him. They beat him. They steal his van. Go on a big police pursuit. Lots and lots of drama. They finally get caught. I don't see white kids doing this. Move on up to Chicago. There's a little place called Albany Park. Uh, a woman was just cruising through the park. A white chick was cruising through the park. The cop, cops. When I get stuff from Chicago, 99. If I do something from Chicago. 99% of the time it's because a cop sent it to me because there's just too much stuff in Chicago I mean it's too easy but anyway they can answer that question why you know why Chicago why did these three black people why did they rape that white woman at this park in Chicago it was at uh, 12 10 a.m. okay she was out okay hey that explains it she was out walking after midnight perfect and here's a black college down there, Houston, called Prairie View A&M. What's up with the, uh, you know, these mass shootings with black people at parties? How many of those have we done in the last couple of weeks? Three shot, one killed, that's four people. Then we'll go down to uh, North Carolina, Raleigh High School. These two students are charged with rape again. So, could, could some of you brainiacs please explain it to me? What is up with this? I mean, I don't want... I don't want theory. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want thirty thousand. I don't want explanations from thirty thousand feet. I want something right down here on the ground. Tell me, for example, why these two guys raped that girl, and why is that so wildly out of proportion? Black on white rape versus white on black rape, where black criminality, black on, black on old, black on young, black on gay, black on straight. Why? 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 Can you tell me? Maybe you could help me out with this case from Boynton Beach, Florida. Black guy stabs a white girl. Well, Bill, this appears to be a home invasion. Ashley Hall is fighting for her life. We spoke with her boyfriend by phone late this afternoon. Rash Scott tells us he is still in shock over the violent attack by a man he says lived in their apartment complex. The couple currently live in Boynton Beach, Florida. Now, according to Scott, the couple were preparing for dinner last week when he says Benito Crisanto came to their apartment to say goodbye before moving to New York. But Scott says that once inside, Crisanto pulled out a gun and tried to rob them. Scott says he wrestled the gun away. Then he and Ashley tried to escape the apartment. Scott says that that is when Crisanto grabbed Ashley, pulled out a knife, and stabbed her multiple times inside of the apartment. When interviewed by police, Ashley told detectives she eventually freed herself from Crisanto and told him to take the money. And she says she did not know why uh, he stabbed her, but remember Crisanto stating, quote, I have to make a sacrifice. Ashley Hall was able to make it outside of her apartment where she collapsed. Now, police say Benito Crisanto got away with $3,000 in cash. This happened during a home invasion. Why did that white girl have to get stabbed? Why? What is up with that? Why are these home invasions so wildly out of proportion? Please don't tell me. Don't tell me it's not happening. Don't tell me white people do it too. Don't tell me white people deserve it. We already know that. Every excuse, every excuse we get for black criminality wildly out of proportion fits into one of those three categories. Every time a reporter or a public official opens their mouth, they're almost always in denial, deceit, and delusion. That's what we hear. And even though we don't do causes and solutions around here, I think I know the cause of that. They're just afraid of making the black kids angry. <laughs> 